and welcome to Crutchfield Live. We are back. More specifically, I am back. He is Zach. What are you doing, man? Hey, I'm just, I'm glad you're back. Uh, it was, <laughs> we had to scramble a little bit without you, but um, we you missed guys, you. You guys made it work. I watched a little bit of the last uh, show with, uh, with uh, Dylan and Eric. They, uh, they're 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 great. Uh, we missed you a lot, though. Um, you came back more aerodynamic than yeah. Ever. You might not think it's me, but it is me. I'm Jr. Training Manager here at Crutchfield. Uh, back to do uh, my side gig, which is hosting Crutchfield uh, Live. Uh, I was gone for the last show because I was uh, in a musical, a stage theater production. See, I had no idea that you were uh, that you did that. You're a very creative guy, anyway, so it makes sense. But uh, I'd love I have to hear this, more about. It. I have this need to perform, <laughs> and uh, this musical theater thing just was all consuming for about two and a half months. Uh, I uh, I had to speak, I had to act, I had to sing, which I already do that on a regular basis. Uh, what I don't do on a normal basis is tap dance. I had to learn how to tap dance, <laughs> and I did. And I performed tap dancing on stage to rave reviews. The real tap dancers in the show said, I'm, I can now legitimately call myself a tap dancer. Do you have the special shoes I now? did. I bought tap shoes. And at floor, and I watched YouTube videos, I learned how to tap dance to be in something rotten. I also grew the beard to a ridiculously long length. The longest I've ever had my beard. And uh, Sunday night when the show closed, I went home and uh, trimmed Trimmed it all off, as you can see. It was a cool look. You looked like uh, Steve Zissou uh, crossed with Santa Claus. Yeah, right? Yeah. It was nice. I actually, uh, I got past the point where the beard was all itchy uh, and to the point where the beard was just kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, and I dug it, but it was time to go. Um, my girlfriend has never seen my entire face uh, until now, so, and probably most of you. I, I, <laughs> it's almost 15 years I've known you and I haven't seen it. Uh, uh, cool. So it was a fantastic time being in the show. I uh, was bummed to miss when we gave away some Bose speakers at the last show. The I Bose know, Flex. It's so cool, and uh, and yeah, we even had uh, special effects, and uh, it was uh, pretty pretty cool. I'm sorry you missed that. Yeah, I missed the the confetti cannons. Confetti the, cannons. That was awesome. Uh, so I, I just called everybody and said, hey, we got to do another sweepstakes. And uh, apparently we're going to do another sweepstakes. More detail on that in just a minute. Uh, we're already getting some shout outs from people watching at home. Kyle Knight on YouTube says hi. Uh, Sonoga Moses said hi. Van Gool said hello. Joe Garcia, thumbs up. You were the first, buddy. Uh, and Tom, uh, Tony uh, on Facebook says hello from Pikesville, Maryland. Uh, keep listening. Dave says AV. All right. I agree with both of them. Yes. Yeah. Thank yes. You. <laughs> uh, please keep the comments coming. Uh, we're going to try to make this as interactive as possible. Hello from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, later on in the show, we're going to play a game which involves everybody out there that's watching. Uh, we're going to be talking about subwoofers a lot in this episode. Uh, and we have a section where we're going to be talking about car subwoofers specifically uh, and just subs in general. And... If you know anything about subwoofers, you know that they can uh, they are usually either a uh, sealed enclosure, a sealed box, or a ported box. There's a hole in it. And they, they have their different pros and cons, their dis, uh, advantages and shortcomings. And we're going to play a game, uh, ported or sealed, uh, because depending on what kind of music you're listening to, where you're listening to it, you might want a ported or sealed box. So uh, if you're wondering what type of subwoofer makes the most sense for you and what you like to watch and listen to uh, and want our recommendations, we will tell you. Uh, we're calling it the ported or sealed game. I love it. You want, you, you want to do a trial run? I know you're not the guy that's actually going to be up here later. No. It's, uh, but you got the signs, right? I've got a, a paddle here. It's got ported or sealed on it. I'll bet and, you know uh, the, I'll bet you have a recommendation. If I asked you, if you're going to listen to punk rock, in, uh, in your, you have like a hatchback, right? Yeah. Small car. Yeah. If you can listen to punk rock in your hatchback, would you prefer a sealed or ported box? What would you recommend? I would have to go with, uh, well, my, my thing is I, I like a sealed box most of the time, but I would yeah. have to say ported in that, uh, in that instance. Got it. Uh, just for volume and just as much bass as I can get in there. there. I do like a nice tight defined Base, which myself. is typically what you're going to get from a seal. Typically, There's, but not we're gonna, always. We're going to explore that a little bit as part of this game. So, if you're curious, uh, start sending in your requests, types of music, genres, things you like to listen to, and uh, let us know, and we will recommend a sealed or ported box for you. Uh, we've got some more shout outs. Stephanie says, I would love to win some speakers. 
Raphael says hi from Puerto Rico. Alan says hi from Kansas City. Rodney, hi from Kansas. Stephanie, hello from Wisconsin. Wow. And Eric's in Temple, Texas. Uh, that's all on Facebook, on YouTube. Uh, Ganesh Narayan says hello, everyone. Mr. Fox says nice set. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Fox. We're, pr we're quite proud of this Fantastic, video set. Mr. Fox. That's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Sam Online. Orlando's here. Right on, Orlando. Uh, Blazed Existence says sealed. All right. Sam Online says punk equals sealed. He disagrees with you. That's the beauty of this game is that we're going to disagree with you, with our, ourselves. Uh, we have different opinions on stuff, and that's half the fun mm -hmm. of it. Sean Roast says hi as well. So... Uh, we're going to talk ported and sealed. Uh, we're going to bring in Jeff Miller later to talk about Axpona, uh, a hi-fi audio uh, gathering of the best of the best uh, in Chicago. Great. He was there, and now he's going to tell us all about it. We've got pictures and a bunch of really fun stuff to talk about there. Uh, we are going to, uh, let's see, talk with one of our newest advisors. He's technically still in training. Oh, wow. But we were talking car subs, and Anthony, uh, before he started working here at Crutchfield, uh, he was in Tampa. Uh, and, uh, by the way, he fully earns the, the name Florida guy. That's what we call him. Florida man. All right. <laughs> uh, so we call him Florida man, but he knows subs. He has done a, a years of installing subs in custom subs, building his own. He's got some cool pics of the sub he built for his own Corvette. Uh, so he's, he's going to be a lot of wow. fun to talk to about car subs. Uh, we'll ask him some ported or sealed I'm questions. I'm glad he's working here now. <laughs> I know, right? Somehow we got him. Uh, and uh, at the, to close this thing out, we might uh, we might do some hashtag customer pictures. So if you've been hashtagging Crutchfield and you've got pictures of your gear, we might be able to show it here on the show. Uh, and before we get any deeper, we got a poll question, uh, and it's you might have guessed it already. What kind of or what style of subwoofer box do you prefer? Uh, we would love to know what you think is best. Uh, people are already commenting on it in the comments, but your choices are sealed, ported, bandpass, or other. If you know what a bandpass box is, you might be very well re uh, prefer that. Um, sealed box is a, a box that doesn't have any holes in it, just a subwoofer. A ported enclosure has a hole in it that lets air in and out. Bandpass is kind of like both in one. And other, because there's other custom sub enclosures that uh, they have some very crazy designs out there. So we're not trying to cover every single one of them. Whew. Cool. All right, big news. We gave away Bose speakers last time. We've got another sweepstakes that starts today. This one, uh, very exciting. Um, the whole reason uh, I'm up here with JR right now is because I recently bought myself an SVS sub, and I haven't stopped telling everybody how great it is. Uh, so... I guess I just kind of gave away part of the part of the thing. You I? did. That's fine. That's why you're here is to give yeah. it away. SVS so yes, is we are giving away a pair of 3,000 micro SVS subs. Uh, uh, so you can have two of them in your home theater, which is super cool. It's a sealed sub, I believe. Um, it is indeed it is. a sealed sub. Uh, it actually has. It's a compact sealed sub. Yeah, so it's very small but mighty. Very mighty. Quite mighty. It's got two eight-inch woofers, one on the left, one on the right, dual opposed woofers. That's right. Uh, yeah. In a sealed enclosure. They work together to give you uh, more bass than you would ever expect from a box this size. I don't know if you can tell from this picture just how big it is. The dimensions on it are, it's not even quite a foot wide. It's 10, almost 11 inches tall, just over 12 inches deep. And that's with the grills on. So basically a cube, uh, like a cubic foot, roughly. And uh, so it's a tiny little sub uh, with two eight inch woofers uh, powered by 800 watts of power. Yeah, and if one's not enough, we're giving a pair of them away uh, two, to one lucky winner. Two of these SVS Micro 3000s. Uh, and our customer reviews on it are pretty strong. 32 at uh, averaging five out of five stars. So uh, you know it's a winner. And people have been uploading pictures of this sub installed. Uh, that's what I've got coming at you on the screen that, now. Yeah, you can really see it's, I mean, it's next to a tower speaker there, but that is pretty small. And if you didn't see it and just heard it coming in the room, you wouldn't, you'd think yep. it was three times the size. Yeah, and so uh, this is a pretty sweet little home theater system right here. I yeah. imagine there's probably some back speakers in there too, but... That probably sounds pretty good. I, I would go as far as to say this system is focused more on sound than it is on video. I mean, that's a relatively small TV. 
yeah, compared that, to how big these speakers are, and you've got a turntable. Yeah. yeah, this that I would I would I would sit in a chair and listen to that system for a while. A customer looked uh, thought that they should go ahead and show us how big it is in real life in their situation. Uh, it's a measuring tape. Here it is, a compact sub under uh, like a small entertainment system, a couple bookshelf speakers, just an easy two channel, 2.1 channel system. It's got to sound amazing. You can fit it in a table. Huh. That's how small this thing is. Uh, this is the most unique picture though. Look at this. This is two Cambridge Audio Minx like Minx satellite Min, speakers. Minx Min or something. Yeah, yeah, these are tiny. They don't they don't produce much bass. They're just small little speakers. They're definitely designed to be used They're with bass. They're nice and clear sound. though. The mm. crystal clear kind of crisp sound out of them. Super clear. Great sounding speakers. And this person has it connected to an iPad using a little uh, HDMI or USB adapter from their iPad through a, a AudioQuest Dragonfly. So they're using an upgraded digital to analog converter to send audio into something that powers those Cambridge audio speakers. We don't see that in this picture and also has an output for a sub. This is a really, I mean, this, this would be a very good sounding little system right here. I mean, you've got a nice clean digital chain coming out with that headphone amplifier, which also you can attach to speakers and, and uh, you got your bass taken care of. Pretty cool. You yeah, can, I'm you wondering don't, you don't if they need a lot to sound great, really. I'm wondering if they use this like when they're practicing piano or something. Like it's the way it's set up at the piano. This has to have something to do with like rehearsing, practicing, learning new songs, things like that. Wow. Yeah, that could be. That's that's pretty cool. So you want two subs? You should get yourself entered into the drawing. We are giving away two of them. The drawing starts today. Are we putting the link in the comments? Is that happening? Link is going in the comments so that you can click that link, go to the page, uh, get yourself registered to enter once into the drawing. Uh, and then two weeks from right now, you need to come back and tune into our next live episode uh, of Crutchfield Live because this, uh, just like we did with the last sweepstakes, we're going to do this thing where we really reward people that come back and watch our show. Uh, and so what you'll be able to do then is there's a code word. You have the code word, which you're only going to get here live on the show. You can go back and enter that code word for an additional 25 entries into the sweepstakes, increasing your chances of winning a lot. Yeah, that's great. And uh, it's what we did for uh, the Bose contest and uh, it gives you a better chance to win and hopefully another reason to tune in next time. I don't know if we uh, talked much about it, but how much do you love that SVS sub? Like, what? Tell us more about the system that it's part of. Yeah, so I, uh, I have um, a system at home it's now just kind of a hodgepodge of different speakers but i wasn't real happy with the sub i had in there it was making enough volume but it just was kind of boomy and uh i tried some things with placement and different things and uh couldn't get it quite right I ended up getting an svs pb 1000 pro uh, pb because it's ported Kind of wanted a sealed box because I, I pref despite my answer earlier, I kind of prefer <laughs> sealed subs generally. But uh, it came with the little plugs, so I thought, eh, you know, if I don't like it, I can always port it. My, you know, plug those ports myself. That's an SVS thing, right? Often their ported subs either come with those port plugs, or you can get them free from SVS mm -hmm. if you want to tighten up the sound of your ported sub. Yeah, it's just a little chunk of foam that just pops in there. You could. I, it's probably some special foam or something. I thought about just putting a sock in there at one point. Don't do that. No, don't do that. Um, but it turned out it didn't need to. I was just so surprised at how well-defined that bass was. Like, makes plenty of plenty of volume. I have a kind of a smaller room, but it was all of a sudden the bass notes had their own identity. You yeah. Know, before it was just kind of all over the place. And it really helps uh, with their, a lot of their subs have an app that connects to it and that lets you really dial things in. You can adjust for problems in your room. Uh, you can, it, it'll help you kind of keep it in where you want it. And then you can just kind of mess with it once in the app and get it dialed in the way you like it. And yeah. uh, it's, uh, it just makes me happy every time uh, bass kicks in on the, some soundtrack or something. Cause I can really hear just instead of just a rumble it's there's more to it than that and is it mostly used for home theater or for music or a little bit of both what are, what are you doing with it home theater is what i've been doing with it so far and um it's so dinosaur explosions dinosaur explosions yeah. it's, i've got a pair of kef speakers as my front and uh it's a, a clip center like i've got a whole weird system going but it sounds pretty good and nice. that svs sub really tied it all together i have to say so whoever uh 
everybody enter this contest and uh, and win one of these uh, guys because they are quite incredible. They make they just make really great. SVS makes great speakers, great subs. They just do. They do indeed. Really they're well. they're often thought of as a subwoofer company, but they make a full range speakers, floor standing, bookshelves, Atmos speakers, center channels, wireless speakers. They've got they've got you covered. Uh, we've got a bunch more people uh, giving us hellos from all over the place. Eric from Mesa, Arizona. Jim says hi from Omaha. Robert says bald and bearded for life. <laughs> Heck yeah. Uh, the beard will be back soon. I am not shaving this until it gets to what I, the, the length that I prefer, but yes. Uh, Dustin says hi from Champion, Ohio. Wayne, hello from Minnesota. Dustin, actually commenting on the subs, uh, would work great. I'm pretty sure he's referring to the free subs that he's hoping to win. Yeah. Uh, would work great in my 3,500 square foot garage using the wireless SVS sub module. Yeah, I the agree. sound path. Uh, I was uh, watching your video of the sound path uh, mm -hmm. recently, and it um, not only does it work for full range speakers, but uh, it, it would be perfect in a garage like that where you don't want to run a million feet of wires around. Exactly. And get and it in there. Two of them, too. Two of them, yeah. <laughs> right, so that'd be yeah, great. Yeah, good call, Dustin. Uh, Frank says, howdy. Uh, over on YouTube, Jeffrey Boyle gives us a uh, peace sign and an electric guitar. Thank you. can't go wrong with that. guy right there. Uh, Joe Garcia says, audio quest dragonfly. Nice. That was, I think he's referring to that picture mm -hmm. on the piano. Uh, Van Gool says, nice SVS sub. Uh, Sam Online says, I prefer a sealed box on the whole. He's with you on that. Uh, and what about, oh, we've got a sealed reported question. We'll just do it now real quick, and then All we'll right. say, keep those coming, though, for later when we bring Matt Freeman in to talk about sealed reported and play the game. But Sam Online says, oh, no, Van Gool says, what about hair bands like Motley Crue and Def Leppard in your SUV? Would you go ported or sealed? Well, uh, they scoop the mids in that music so much, I don't know if you can hear much bass. Uh, but I would, I would go sealed for that because... I just like the definition of those bases. Hold notes. up the sign? Sorry. You hold up the sign. <laughs> it's a big part of the game. Somebody made those signs. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm new here. Right. <laughs> uh, so a couple things before I let you go. Uh, we should probably talk about this guy right here. Oh, yeah. Boy, are we proud of that. We started our YouTube channel 2009-ish. Uh, Anybody know? I can't remember. But I remember when we had less than 10,000 subscribers, and we were just starting out and kind of not making a ton of videos and and everything and uh, we were sent this shiny award major award oh a major award it's a major award for passing 100,000 subscribers so thanks to many of you watching right now and we're actually up around 135 or so 133 I just looked right before we went live so that's where we're at now we are well on our way to our next one which comes in at how many uh, one million. million subscribers. So, uh, it, so it's going to take a few weeks, but we'll get there. We've we've got <laughs> we've got work to do, and we are going to keep doing it, making new videos, keep going live, uh, and uh, you've got work to do as well. If you're into this, uh, you should definitely tell your friends about uh, what we're doing here at YouTube.com/Crutchfield. Uh, hopefully, the content you're finding it uh, is uh, is applicable to your life. You know, solutions for sound, audio, TV, video, drones. I mean, we're doing videos on all sorts of stuff uh, and we're gonna keep doing that. So we'll keep making the videos, you keep spreading the word and uh, hopefully, yeah, maybe in a couple weeks we're celebrating a million subscribers. I love it. Uh, yeah. yeah, very cool. It's been a, it's, we're gonna make more, more videos all the time. Uh, to celebrate SVS uh, and the sweepstakes, next show we're also going to in, uh, be interviewing Nick from SVS. Awesome. Those guys are great. They're, uh, they're, they love talking to us about this stuff, so it'll be, bring your questions for those guys next time. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Zach. Yeah, buddy. Appreciate you joining me, my friend. Uh, what have we got here? Before I get to our next guest, uh, we've got... Clarify again that the code word will be dropped on the May 19th episode. Yes, yeah, so May 19th is the next episode of Crutchfield Live. We will, you'll, you'll be smack dab in the middle of the uh, actual sweepstakes, and we will drop a code word. When you have that code word and follow the link in the comments, you'll be able to go back in and uh, add that code word to your sweepstakes registration so that you can get an additional 25 entries into the sweepstakes. So that's two weeks from right now. We'll be dropping the code word into the next meeting. Uh, Rodney says, hi from Kansas. Uh, Besker says, asks, is it okay to like both sealed and ported? Gosh, 
Somebody's always got to be difficult. You no, know, it's totally fine. Uh, and there's really, uh, as we're going to find out, there's very few wrong answers on this question. Uh, what do we got? Jeff, uh, Jamaica Social says, hey, guys, should you celebrate dual subwoofers together or separately? Interesting. Uh, I think uh, to each their own. Uh, all right, we've got another special guest coming up for you. Let's see if we can get him loaded up on the big old computer. Let's see here. That go away. Oh, look, he is sitting there ready and waiting. He's probably solving a Rubik's Cube in his lap right now. Is that what you were doing? Hold up the Rubik's Cube for us. Oh, not even close. Not You got a lot of work to do to solve that Rubik's Cube. Welcome, Anthony. How are you today? Doing good, JR. How are you? Fantastic. So Anthony and I are together like virtually like this pretty much all day, every day these days because Anthony is brand new here at Crutchfield. He's been here just a few months and uh, you are uh, still technically in training, although you've helped customers with car products, you're currently learning about home products. So we're talking about things like home theater and turntables and SVS powered subs. Uh, but the main reason we thought of you to join us on this episode of Crutchfield Live was because of some of your previous experience before coming to Crutchfield and your love of all things subs and bass, as I've learned from working Absolutely. with you. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are? What what did you do before coming to Crutchfield? Uh, well, I have been an installer for about the last 20 years. Um, I've worked at various shops around the Tampa Bay area, including having my own. Uh, I recently resigned from Pinellas County School Board down there um, as a head plan operator uh, when I relocated up here to Virginia. But uh, I've continued to uh, do a lot of uh, installs, mobile installs, custom fab, uh, audio, video security uh, on the side uh, for many years. Um, so you've done some pretty like intensive, like very custom subwoofer installs? Absolutely. I've done fiberglass enclosures. I've done plexiglass. I've done floating amp racks, ported sealed walls. Uh, custom fiberglass kick panels, custom center consoles, uh, you know, pretty much a little bit of everything other than motorization. I've never, I've never motorized an amp rack, which is on a list to do. So the installs you're talking about, is this similar to the stuff we might have seen on like Pimp My Ride where you're, you've got like lights and amp racks and subs mounted in really cool visually stunning ways as well as they better sound good? Is that, is that kind of what you were doing? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, we've, I've done several, uh, that I've painted to match the exterior of the car. I've done a bunch that I've wrapped in vinyl or I've wrapped in, uh, uh, felt to match the trunk or the kick panels, uh, add, uh, ring lights, um, backlight, backlit things, even all the way back to when I was still using neons before LEDs were a thing, uh, all kinds of, all kinds of cool stuff. Are there any installs that stand out that are the most memorable? And, and if so, why? Um, there's, there's a lot that were really cool. Um, there's been some ball players cars that I've, that I've worked on, uh, with a team of people, uh, at a couple of shops down in Florida. Uh, one of them was in a blue Honda fit with a, uh, with four twelve four kicker comp VR 12s. And uh, it was in a full fiberglass enclosure that was ported with a floating amp rack over top of it with lots of LEDs. Um, when I went to Installer Institute many, many years ago uh, over in Holly Hill, Florida, we got to work with Fishman and we got to play with, you know, bubble walls and stuff like that. And some of those demo vehicles, uh, there was a shop back then called Audio Excellence by West where we got to um install uh it was 15 10 inch subwoofers in the back of a navigator for uh nba basketball player um which was pretty incredible uh building that wall it blew the back windows out uh, oh, a couple of times that, is that like a sky's the limit sort of an installation yes yeah. that was we were given we were given unlimited funds and said uh here's what i wanted to do so have nice. at it and i mean that that, that navigator was absolutely incredible 
So uh, when you weren't doing that, would you also just like install more modest subwoofers for the average everyday Joe who isn't an NBA star with millions of dollars to spend whatever they want on their subwoofers? Did you just install like normal subs too? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, throughout my years, I've installed, you know, single eights, single tens, uh, dual tens, dual twelves, uh, you know, just regular prefab boxes with an amp. Uh, you know, integrate into a factory radio or adding on to with a aftermarket radio. Uh, you know, it, 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 there was tons of those, tons and tons of those. Uh, would you say you added subs to factory radios uh, a lot? I mean, I would think that's a, a pretty popular thing to do just because it's probably the, the quickest, easiest, most effective way to make a factory system actually sound okay. Absolutely. It, it, I've done a ton of those, um, like the, the kicker self-powered subs and the infinity base links. Uh, those were some of the main ones that I've done a, a tons of, and they absolutely uh, fill in that low end void that you don't typically hear on a factory radio. It gives you that, that clean type bass response that most factory radios and, and speaker setups are missing. Absolutely. We've got a couple of comments coming in on Facebook. David says, hi from Coleman, Alabama. Just installed my system. Right on, David. Hope it's rocking nice. for you. Gaston says, uh, what is, or what's your opinion on running dual subs? Now, that's the whole question. So do you have thoughts on would you prefer two subs, one sub, ten subs? Like uh, maybe, just a, maybe just one versus two. What do you think, is a, what do you think there? Well, I think it depends on what his goal on the sound is. Uh, I think if he's trying to have a, a really clean uh, sound quality build, uh, depending on the size of the sub, what type of sub it is, what type of enclosure he's going to use, is it going to, you know, uh, it, you know, you could get away with one if he wants a little bit more oomph other than just what you can get with one sub, then you add the other sub and uh, a little bit more power. And again, you know, different, different box build and all that, you know, port matching. If you go ported, yeah, you, you know, you can drop to those lower SPL or lower frequencies, gain a little bit of SPL. And, uh, you know, I think it all, it all depends on what his, his goal in mind is. When you were doing this, uh, live with people in the room with you, right? Your customers were in a shop. You were talking to them in person, uh, obviously pretty different than what we do on a daily basis. We're taking calls and chats from customers online. But uh, when you would talk to people, would you go through a, like a lengthy process where you're talking about what they like to listen to, how loud they want it, uh, how much room in their car or truck that they're willing to give up for subs? Like that's that had to be a big part of it, right? Absolutely. We had to we had to definitely get through some qualifying and find out what exactly they wanted, why they wanted it and how they were going to achieve it. Uh, you know, and that was what type of music they listened to and you're right, how loud it was. And then ultimately how much room do we have in the vehicle? Because if you have, you know, a small vehicle and you want four fifteens, well, are we now taking the back seat out? How do you want to do this? Yeah. That, I mean, that's a big part of it, right? If you need to be, if you need to have cargo room left for whatever it is you're carrying with you, golf clubs, stroller, kids stuff, groceries, uh, your band's PA equipment, right? Uh, you can't necessarily mm -hmm. just put a humongous box in there. Um, you know, we uh, at Crusher, we've been selling these custom enclosures from several different companies for years now, like the JL Audio Stealth Boxes, MTX uh, uh, Thunderforms, some others. Uh, have, did you install any of those? Did you have any experience with those? I've installed many of them. Uh, the MTX Thunderforms, uh, I've been installing since probably... The early 2000s, the stealth boxes, uh, probably within the last 10 years, I've been installing those. And those those stealth boxes, I, I'm telling you, I, I can't speak highly enough about, you know, their construction and the uh, the time that JL Audio actually, you know, invests into the quality of the build of those boxes. They, uh, they fit perfectly. They look great and they sound amazing. Well worth it. Yeah, so you didn't always have to custom fabricate a box from scratch into exactly what you wanted. You could often use those that are, you know, JL Audio's done the research to make sure that their custom subs look good and blend in with the car and sound fantastic. Like JL Audio doesn't sell a sub like that unless it also sounds great. 
Absolutely. Hey, we've got questions coming in. Uh, first off, do you do you know a guy named Mark Wilkins? Absolutely, I do. Mark is watching uh, and says Anthony is the man. So shout out to Mark. Thanks for watching. Blaze... Done a few systems for him in the past. Nice. Oh, you've put systems in his car. Yes. Can you talk about them? Do you remember uh, the last you one? Do? The last one that we did, he had a Pioneer App Radio Two, uh, Kicker, Comp uh, Five by sevens all the way around. And then he had two kicker comp 15s in a, in a ported SPL box and his, in the, in the back seat of his truck all lifted the seats up. Nice. And, uh, it was, it was pretty, pretty nice. It got down. I would imagine two 15s in a truck. Heck yeah. Thanks for the yeah. shout out, Mark. Uh, blazed existence, uh, <laughs> says when a car subwoofer recommends a sealed enclosure of one and a half to three cubic feet, what factors determine the size enclosure you should use? So I guess the big question is, is, you know, you get these recommendations from a manufacturer of a sub. So Kicker, Rockford, MTX, JL, uh, they'll tell you this is the size enclosure it is optimized to work in. Uh, what's that based on? Could you elaborate on that at all? Uh, well, it's typically based on the deal smalls of the driver itself. The driver itself is going to have quite a few different variables that you're going to want to uh, look at, and it'll say that in the owner's manual. Um, now, what I typically do is if it says it's good for one cube up to three cubes, especially if it's sealed only, because usually the bigger the cubic foot, uh, or cubic inch that airspace that it needs means it's going to be for ported. Uh, the smaller is for sealed. So depending on how much room I have in the car, if it's, you know, uh, we'll say a, a Cadillac DTS, plenty of room in the trunk. Uh, I'll go with the, the biggest box I can. This way it has the most airspace possible. Now, if I'm going to put something in, you know, a Honda Civic or something like that, I'm going to try to make it the smallest that I can but it's still going to meet those feel small requirements that those drivers are going to need. Yeah. And most subs, they'll give you that range so that you can build the box that's right for your car or you buy the box that's right for your car uh, and right for the type of music and the type of sound you want sealed or ported large or small. And that range of sizes varies. Uh, and it usually, I think it correlates a lot to what, what, what did the manufacturer intend this sub to be used for? Right. Like why, why did they, is, did they build this sub thinking, all right, this subs for big boxes, big ported boxes. Did they build this sub for small sealed boxes? I mean, that's two very differently designed subwoofers. <clears throat> and so you got to take into account what, the, what did the manufacturer recommend and why? Yep. And that's why it, those will, those will all be under the specifications and that little pamphlet that uh, most of the subwoofers come with. Nice. Uh, there's a comment here that leads well into these uh, boxes I've got over here. I'm going to pull up some subs and I'm going to get your thoughts on them real quick. Uh, but Frank says he loves his Infinity Base Link, uh, which is not exactly the type of sub we've been discussing so far, right? Like you and I are just now talking about <clears throat> custom enclosures, big boxes, small boxes, ported and sealed. Uh, but a, a growing category of subwoofers is powered subs. Subs that are built by a company like Infinity, Kicker, uh, Rockford, there's tons of them, that is an enclosure with a woofer already in it and an amplifier already in it. So all of this guesswork is taken out of it. You don't have to think about what size box to get or how much amplifier power you're going to need. It's all sort of figured out for you. And the Infinity Base Link that this customer or this viewer named Frank says it's been around forever. Uh, I mean, 20 years, roughly. And it's been mm -hmm. updated several times. I've got a current version of the Infinity Base Link right here. Uh, this is a very compact, you can tell it's uh, not very large, sits under a seat in most cars, uh, has a built-in amplifier. All the connections for amp power and signal are on the side here. Um, we sell a ton of these. Uh, we've got a kicker powered sub in a sort of a similar fashion here. It is a, uh, it's a powered sub, also very compact, made to go under a seat, right? Uh, it, these things are heavy duty. These are metal cabinets, uh, you know, robust subwoofers, but they don't take up much space. And uh, 
What is your thoughts on subs like that? I, I love those subs for very small, tight spaces. Uh, you know, the Infinity Base Link, I, I think I started installing those back in the Circuit City days. So we're going back, I want to say 05, 06, something along those lines. Uh, you know, and the first one I, I installed, I had put it in a, a Honda Odyssey minivan. Uh, customer just wanted something to pick up a little low end and he didn't want to take up much room. Uh, so when I put it in there, my first initial re, you know, reaction to it was, wow, I really didn't think it would sound like this. Uh, and you know, over the years they've refined everything and, you know, for adding on to a factory stereo, whether it's amplified or not, uh, it really adds a whole different layer to the experience of the stereo. Uh, that you really wouldn't think. And with its compact design, like you said, you you really can stick these things under seats nowadays. Uh, you know, if you have a small little cargo area in an SUV, you can put it up against, you know, one of the sidewalls so it's out of the way and you still have all your space for groceries or Home Depot trips. Uh, and the, um, the amount of amp, you know, power draw that it has is very minimal compared to some of the larger stereos. And, uh, you know, realistically, it's, it's, a, it's a great bang for the buck. I, you know, I highly recommend them uh, to pick up that extra low end and give you a little bit more enjoyment out of your music. Yeah, so you don't have to, you don't have to be that person looking to annoy the neighbors, annoy your, uh, you know, making so much bass it's rattling windows. Uh, obviously, we can do that. If you want that, we got you covered. We have people like Anthony who have been doing it in person for years. Uh, and if you just want to talk about how to do that in your car, any of our advisors are trained to help you get that kind of bass. But if you just want your music to sound a little full, something like a bass link, uh, one of these kicker subs, uh, there's plenty, and there's plenty to choose from now. These things are fantastic yep. for just that modest bump to the low end, just to get your music sounding, you know, full and rich. Mm -hmm. We've got more comments coming in. Uh, more of your buddies from Florida, uh, I guess, are watching. Uh, Jim, Justin H. I've personally seen yep. a few of Anthony's builds from Florida. Definitely quality stuff. Uh, his Corvette yep. was my favorite. I think now is the probably that's a perfect segue into can you tell us uh before we load the pictures uh because i've got pictures of your sub that you sent us uh can you tell us about the sub you installed in your corvette like which vet is it why did you go with this sub what amps are powering it that kind of thing and then we'll show pictures of it here as you're talking okay it's a uh 97 corvette first model run of the fifth generation uh it is a kicker comp 10 inch sub uh, be empowered by a Kenwood Excelon five channel amp uh, that I did a copy almost of the JL Stealth box that they make for the sixth gen Corvette because at the time they didn't make one for the fifth gen. And uh, so I still wanted to be able to put my target top back there and I wanted to have a nice clean sound. So I made an inverted fiberglass enclosure that went um, kind of down into the little cubby. It's just under uh, one cube uh, on airspace and it really sounds great. It's got, uh, I think it's 400 watts going to that sub and uh, it, it, sounds, it sounds phenomenal. And what kind and of that, music do that, you play on this sub? A little bit of everything. Uh, so a that's, little, that, there's you're not some allowed techno, to, there's some rap. You're, you're not allowed to answer with that. You need to give me a real answer. <laughs> okay. So, uh, a little bit of techno, a little bit of hip hop, some rap, uh, maybe a little country in there. Uh, but it really, it really does sound great. Uh, it's paired with, uh, kicker KS, uh, components in the front and coaxials in the rear. And then it's got a, uh, 10.1 inch, uh, Android floating screen. So I could, uh, stream all live stream, all my gauges and stuff off of the, uh, off of the ECU. Gotcha. All right. Now that we've heard about it, uh, can we throw the pictures up of Anthony's, uh, Corvette sub? Uh, so we're going to cycle through those. Uh, yeah, people are seeing them at home now. So that is, that's your trunk area, right? Where, and the skull is, uh, that cover is over top of your amplifier. Yep, yep, that's underneath where the uh, Kenwood Excelon is mounted, yes. And this first picture we're looking at now, it just looks like there's a subwoofer just like sitting randomly off to the left of your car, like you haven't installed it yet. That was my first thought when I saw this picture was like, oh, the sub's just sitting there. I wonder what the box is going to look like. Uh, can you go to the next picture? 
there we go. That's what the box looks like. So now people are seeing Anthony as the box sitting out of your car with the woofer mounted to that custom enclosure. And you probably said it and I missed it. What did you say that enclosure is made of? Did you do fiberglass for that? The bottom half of it is uh, three quarter inch MDF. And then the top half is fiberglass. Uh, and then I use a little trick that I picked up along the years that, uh, you know, when, when you use, when you use your fleece and, and you put the resin over top of it to make the, the shell essentially of, of the fiber of the uh, enclosure, uh, once you, you know, build up your, your soft spots with fiberglass, I then take a mixture of Bondo fiberglass resin and, and the hardener for the fiberglass resin. Uh, the MEKP, and it makes almost like a cake batter consistency. <coughs> and when you pour it over, not only does it give it extra rigidity, but uh, it smooths everything out, and uh, it really aids in the sanding process. There's not much you have to do after that, especially if you're wrapping it. Uh, I hope there's people watching that all those words meant something to them. I've never built anything <laughs> with fiberglass. I mean, I know what fiberglass is and the resins and the stuff, and there's chemicals and all of that. Uh, and, uh, but it, it can be dangerous stuff, but if you know what you're doing, you can be incredibly creative with it. And this is a perfect example of that. Uh, can we go through some more of these pictures? Uh, there's another angle on the same sub, uh, and there it is installed. I like this picture. The lighting is really good. It looks like it was taken from in front of the woofer. It's kind of looking back because so you got some nice lighting on it. You can see how it sort of fits nicely back into that corner of that, uh, that hatch area. Uh, what, oh, and now we've got this, uh, the skull lit up. So this is like the full, complete install there. Yep, that's the uh, Corvette Racing Jake logo. Corvette the, Racing uh, C5R. Jake? Yep, the Corvette, they call, they call the skull in the Corvette Racing team Jake. So, you know, when the other opponents, when he's coming up on them, all you see is a giant skull, especially in the, on the, C, in the C5R Corvettes that they, that they nice. were racing back in the day. Now they're the fancy C8 mid-engines. Uh, we've got some more people that you must have told you were going to be on the show because they're watching and they're commenting. Uh, is this your dad, uh, Michael Saris? Pops, Florida. Yep, Anthony installed Pops. a crazy system in my 94 Amigo. 94 yep. Azuzu Amigo? Is that what that was? Oh, so that so listen, so that goes deep, okay? So originally, originally back in the, in the middle night, that's where... The, Crutchfield is where the Sony CD player came from for that vehicle back when I was in high school. Nice. Then, uh, so we had MB Court highs and mids, and then we had a couple of Rockford Fosgate XLC 10s and a Rockford Fosgate amp back then. Then once I took it over, uh, he gave that vehicle to me in the early 2000s. I then had it on air ride and on 20 inch rims. Uh, there was four kicker, comp vr 12s in the back with a couple of alpine i think they were mrd or mrp 1000.1s they were the uh the digital ones uh i had an eclipse four channel lamp uh running the kicker highs and mids and i think i think at that point in time uh i was using an eclipse uh uh what was it the eclipse uh it was the in dash flip out, but it was the one that you had to like push in and then it, you'd pull the screen out and fold it up. Yeah, it was manual, not <laughs> motorized. Yep. Yeah. And it was, yeah, that was, that was, that was a fun toy for a did, while. Did you yep. sell that vehicle to, uh, to Justin? Yep, he did. Uh, I did. <laughs> he, uh, he then took it and, uh, he did a great paint job. Uh, he's a very talented automotive, uh, body and, and, and painter. And, and then he did some airbrush work on it. And uh, that thing, that thing was really cool. Justin commented. He said that was a crazy build too. I bought that truck from Anthony, so that's how <laughs> that's how I knew. Uh, Mr. Fox says I like cake batter, so he's with you on that. That was the fiberglass stuff you were talking about, right? Uh, yep. Yep. What do we got here? Alejandro Ilanina Mohammed says. Oh, my, yep. My homie. Alex. Yep. He was uh, Tampa Vet Mafia. He was one of the, one of the first members uh, in my crew. And uh, I have done quite a bit of work to his Corvette and now so to his Jeep. And he's been, he's been after me for quite a while to uh, hook up his backup camera and his car play. <laughs> Sounds like it's time for a road trip up to Virginia. <laughs> uh, he comes back to, says, uh, to say, agree, Anthony also installed my car stereo. Great work. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty fantastic. Um, 
the uh, Tampa Vet Mafia, can you maybe explain that so people understand uh, two things? One, uh, that you're not in the actual mafia, and two, uh, why do we call you Florida Man? <laughs> uh, Tampa Vet Mafia is a car club that I started in 2020. Uh, it basically just a group of Corvette guys that we didn't really feel like we fit in in the traditional Corvette clubs. And uh, it spiraled uh, up to, I think we're at like 34, 3,500 members internationally. Um, and it, it's just a good group of people that we get together and talk about car stuff. There's a Facebook group on it and Instagram. And, uh, you know, so it's just it's just all Corvette related. So, you know, I guess I guess I'm the unofficial Corvette godfather uh, in training. But, uh, nice. you know, and then, and then Florida man, uh, well, you know, anything goes in Florida and, uh, <laughs> some of the stories with, with gators and snakes and, and, uh, big waves and, and taking out small boats and, uh, and, uh, small craft advisories and, you know, all kinds of good stuff. Hurricane stories. We, uh, we definitely do. We do do some, uh, some fun stuff down there. Uh, I feel like. I feel like we're not done talking to you, but at the same time, we've got other guests lined up. Uh, and so I, I foresee you being a, a guest on a future episode of Crutchfield Live so we can talk more about subs. I mean, I had on my list to talk to you about subs on boats. And I think if we open that can of worms, we, we'd be talking about that for another 20 minutes. I think that's a future Crutchfield Live topic. So get your thoughts together sure. on that. I'd love to have you back for that. Uh, I want to end sure. this on one that we had actually a, a question from a viewer on our community post on YouTube before this, even we, before we even went live, like a day or so ago. Uh, and I just want to get your thoughts on their comment. Uh, this is from somebody named G bucks on YouTube. Uh, current setup is two old 12 inch MTX Terminator 4,500s and a power acoustic 2,500 amp. Gonna upgrade to SCAR SVR 12s or Rockford P3s and a Terra Amps amp in the near future. Uh, do all those, uh, we don't carry all of the brands mentioned in that comment, uh, but uh, I thought maybe you might have some thoughts on, uh, on what this customer's talking about. Uh, well, I definitely see what direction he's wanting to go in. Uh, the SCAR stuff, uh, you know, even I put a, a SCAR a scar 10 in a, in a ported box in uh, Alejandro's wife's infinity. And it surprisingly sounds very good at a thousand Watts. Um, so, you know, depending on the scar subs that he goes with, depending on the box that he goes with, uh, you know, all very good. Um, you know, the, the amplifier selection, you know, the Terra amp stuff is, you know, it's good. Uh, you know, but if you're, if you're going to go in that direction, uh, you know, maybe think of the Rockford Fosgate just out of the warranty and reliability, uh, you know, double check whatever you're doing, uh, with the, the sensitivity, um, on the speakers themselves to see what the true, you know, RMS is, is going to be on the amp and make sure that it's, you know, a good match, make sure that you're not, you know, if you do go with the scar and, and that Terra amp don't overpower them. You know, try to stay within 70 percent, uh, you know, and, and it should be it should sound OK. Also, depending on the box that you put in, uh, you know, with with the um, with the scar stuff, I would 100 percent put it in a ported box. Uh, the Rockford Fosgate P3s, I would definitely put those in a ported box, um, you know, so either either way, either direction, just make sure you really match those, you know, take the time to look at the specs on the subwoofers and then match it to the appropriate uh, amplifier that you would need. I thought you might have some thoughts on that. Uh, I uh, All I know about SCAR audio is that they come up on my Facebook feed all the time, uh, and I've never heard of Terra Amps, so I thought you might have, and it sounds like you do, uh, and those sound like solid recommendations, and it, uh, you know, I'm, of course I'm biased, but I'd say I like your idea of going Rockford, because uh, uh, that stuff is bulletproof, so uh, absolutely mm -hmm. love it. Uh, Anthony, any parting thoughts before I let you go? Uh, nope. This was really fun. Look forward to doing it again. Awesome. I look forward to having you back on again, uh, sometime probably this year to talk boats and subs on boats. That'd be fun. Uh, thank you so awesome. much for, thank you so much for taking some time out and doing this, even though it's uh, part of your job and I told you that you had to, so, you know, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Thanks, man. Have a great rest All of right. your day.
Yes, sir. You too. Right on. Uh, that's Anthony. He's an advisor here at Crutchfield. Uh, he's already been talking uh, with our customers uh, about car audio products. He's currently learning about home audio products and will be back on the phones and available for you to call him in the very near future, just a couple short weeks from now. Uh, he will be a full-fledged, fully trained advisor, uh, ready to help anybody with anything. Uh, and as you can see, he really knows his stuff. Uh, so if you have questions about subwoofers, uh, you can, I mean, any advisor can help you, right? They're all trained uh, by me and one of our other trainers, Chris. Uh, and, you know, we teach them how to put subs and amps together in boxes and ported and sealed and all of that. Uh, Anthony, though, is a cut above. Uh, he probably knows more about subs than most. And uh, if you're lucky enough to get Anthony on the phone, I think you'll be pretty well served. Uh, and uh, so good luck. Uh, thank you again to Anthony for joining us. We've got uh, more sub stuff coming in, which I think we're ready. I think we're ready to bring in Matt and play a game. You ready to come on in, Matt? I'm ready to come on in. Bring it, buddy. All right. We're going to play Ported or Seal. Ported That's or the reason seal. we have I these love it. signs. I love it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we were hoping that people watching might want to throw out at us, uh, and the sky's the limit here, right? If it's it something is. you can yes. listen to on your stereo, you can use that. Mm -hmm. uh, you can tell mm -hmm. us the type of music you prefer. You can tell us your favorite band. You can ask mm -hmm. us about a specific song. If we've heard of it, we probably have an opinion. That's correct. Right? And we are going to tell you whether or not we would pr recommend a sealed or a ported exactly. enclosure. This is kind of like that thing in City Slickers where the uh, Shallowitz brothers are challenged to say which kind of ice cream would pair perfectly with any given entree. Nice. Boy, that's a only, throwback. Only that's... the freshest 30-year-old pop culture references for us today. <laughs> City Slickers, huh? Okay. I like it. Um, first off, we got to establish some credibility. Why did we bring you in? Do you know anything about subs? I assume you do. What do you do here, Matt? I am the editor of our catalog. I edit all the uh, car audio video related uh, pages for our catalog. And I've been doing this, well, the editing thing for about 10, 15 years. But I've been writing for Crutchfield for 22 now. So you're not so, just a, an English nerd, right? You don't just go correct grammar. Not you, only that, correct, right? Yes. You, when you are that, <laughs> uh, but you also knew a thing or two about car audio. I have, I have installed my fair share of systems. I've had set stuff up. I've had crazy setups in my own vehicle. So yeah, I've uh, been around this block one time or two. What do you have? Do you have a subwoofer in your car? I do. I currently in my car have a I have an Infinity Reference 12 inch sub in a ported box. Ported. Indeed. Nice. Yeah. Why'd you go ported? Ported, uh, mostly for the efficiency. Um, you know, put side by side, given the same amount of power, a ported box is going to play a little bit louder than a sealed box. Um, so I've got a, I've got a smaller sedan. I didn't want to tax the uh, alternator too much with a large, high-powered amp. So ported seemed the way to go to get the uh, volume I was looking for without putting the uh, strain on the electrical system with the big amp. And what kind of car is this? Is the sub in a trunk? Is it in the it's hatchback? In the, it's in the trunk of a uh, 14 Ford Focus. Okay. Yeah. Nice. So. so he knows a thing or two. I know a thing or two about you bass. You do know a thing or two I've about bass. I've got opinions. Bass. You've got opinions. Uh, we, we did a poll. And let's see what people think first, then we'll see what people are uh, asking us for opinions on. Uh, I only see one or two in there so far. Now is the time, if you're watching this, to throw out what you want us to recommend ported or sealed for. So mm -hmm. music, band, I mean, it could be anything. Uh, if Type you can't come up with something, I got a list of things. <laughs> so we got you covered either way. But here's the poll question from earlier. What style of subwoofer box do you prefer? Uh, we had 32 votes on this poll. Uh, the quest, the options were ported, sealed, other, or band pass. Uh, did you have you seen the results already? I have not seen the results. All right, what do you think? One, there was a clear winner. I, if I had to guess, I would guess ported. Yes, you are correct. Uh, that's what do I win? On YouTube, uh, over on Facebook, also ported wins there as well. So yep. on YouTube, ported gets fifty three percent. On Facebook, ported gets forty seven percent. Sealed on Facebook uh, gets 38%, 34% on YouTube, so a close that second. About right. Those are cl those are the two most popular, yeah, sure, most common. Sure. So uh, other gets nine percent <laughs> in both places, and band pass looking at like three or seven percent. So not a whole lot of people doing band pass. Used to be a bigger deal. Used to be a bigger deal. They just take up so much space. Yeah. Um, for those who don't know, it's a combination of a sealed and a ported where you have a ported box and a sub in it, but it also has an enclosed chamber. Um, so it takes up about twice the space as, as your average yeah. subwoofer box. And 
Yes, for specialty uh, installations. A lot of times it. it was more about how they looked than how they sure, sounded. Sure, right? you could light often, them up on the inside. Yeah, they have like plexiglass fronts yeah. so you could see the woofer and yep. light it up and all that. And uh, yep. it was pretty awesome. So, <laughs> uh, Cool. So let's get into it. Uh, and along the way, I've got some stuff. And I've got a question from a, uh, from a viewer on YouTube as well. Very good. Uh, so the we first one, questions. somebody, Alejandro, Anthony's buddy, yeah. uh, says... Country? Country. Country. Ready, I'm going to say. Ready, ready, Wait ready, for it. Yeah, ready? ready? Ready, go. Both. Sealed and ported. <laughs> Depending. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I thought know. you didn't know how to hold up a sign. <laughs> I know, I do. <laughs> so I would, the reason I say that is that it depends on the area you're listening to, I would say. If, if you're listening to more of the modern stuff with, you know, more electronic bass, they even, you know, bring in a lot of rock elements, some, some electronic music elements. Ported is good. It's going to bring out that bass, cut through, you know, or, or accentuate the, uh, the the high frequencies. But if you listen to the old school stuff, I think I'm going sealed, where you're getting more of the acoustic guitars and the stand-up basses and things mm -hmm. like that, um, where you want it to be nice and tight and focused. Uh, I had so. on my list I made, you know, you know, just in case nobody had any uh, <laughs> yeah, right. requests, just in case, I had on my list cowboy music, <laughs> stadium country, and just plain old, just generic, whatever there you go. country music <laughs> is, right? right exactly. But yeah, there's different types. And those cowboy yep. cowboy songs, man, oh, uh, man. You, you, want don't, that you, nice you don't need focus. a ported box, Ooh. man. You need that bass to be nice and tight. You do, because you don't want to overshadow the vocals, particularly. Johnny Cash. I mean, he needs to sound big and bellowy, yep. but not, you but know. clean. Yeah, yep. clean, yep. clean, clean. Yep, agreed. Very good. Uh, the The... Huffman family, I think we all know who that is. Oh Lord! Uh, says, "What do we recommend for dinosaur explosions?" Dinosaurs like yeah, to rumble. Pretty clearly. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you just need maximum output. Exactly. You're gonna get that. Exactly. Uh, you want to feel that in your fillings. It's easiest to get that with a ported box for sure. <laughs> uh, Sam online. Here's a good one. Mm. Classic rock in a 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe. So that's a, like a mid-sized oh, SUV, gosh. if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? That is, Santa that is Fe. Correct. That's an SUV. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Classic rock. Classic rock. I'm going, ah, Ooh. disagreement. I, I'm actually, no, I did. I, I, I don't know how to use a sign. That's what I get for busting yeah. you on, uh, on uh, sealed. Uh, sorry. Sealed. Yep. Uh, yeah, I think we're exactly. both right on. Yep. Uh, you want it to be tight. You want that kick drum to kick you in the chest. Mm -hmm. um, but you want it to be balanced with, with the mids and the highs, especially when you got a lot of electric guitar. You've got bands with female vocals. You, you want it nice and balanced. Nice. Uh, I'm looking at here. We've got more. Quirty Quirts asks about dubstep. Dubstep. Oh, come on. For the bass drop? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you want that thing to echo. You want to be heard a couple blocks down the street, if not more. Yeah. Bring the port. You ready for this one? Oh, I might be. This is one I hadn't thought of to put on my list. Oh, good. How about ragtime? Ragtime. Oh, this is tempting. You know what? I'm sticking with Sealed. Ah, we, <laughs> here we go. Again, anytime I'm, anytime I've got something that's going to have a stand-up bass, that's going to have acoustic instruments, I, I, I do want it to be nice and tight and clean. I, I want, I want everything to stay in, in good balance and not to have a certain range of frequencies overpowering the rest. Yeah, no, it just needs to blend nicely. Yeah, it needs exactly. to have that low end uh, because, contrary to popular belief, pretty much all music has some bass in it. Oh sure, uh, oh, sure. There's... E even music you don't associate with. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to have a subwoofer for that, but a subwoofer will absolutely make ragtime music sound oh, better. Yeah. We did an article a few years ago um, for our holiday catalog um, where we wrote an article about it, the fact that Christmas music benefits from a subwoofer and gave examples that people might not have thought about, sure. including the Nutcracker Suite. Perfect. Exactly. I like it. Uh, uh, and speaking of the Nutcracker? Nut, nut <laughs> sure. Nutquacker? Nut Nutquacker, nut quacker, yes. Talk. The all duck. Uh, <laughs> nutcracker Suite. Uh, Tony on Facebook says, how about classical music listening and mostly home theater? What type Ported or sealed, boy, that's a conundrum oh, right there because is. there's two things in one. If you got, I guess the idea here is one sub that's right. going to be in one system that is going to be used for classical music listening and home theater. Because of the home theater, yeah, yeah, and I, I think room size is going to make a difference. If it's in a larger room, some of that, some some of the reverberations are going to be dissipated a little bit with the classical stuff. But you're going to get good efficiency, so it's going to draw out the timpani and mm -hmm. and the cellos, and you know, especially a lot of the, like the pizzicato cello kind of stuff, or the lower end of the uh, the piano keyboard. So we were talking earlier before we went live about this, and maybe now's the time to talk about it. If you and, and one of the reasons we probably both went ported mm -hmm. 
is because you can, depending on the ported sub, you can tighten it up a little bit. There's things you, you can. can do to get a more accurate, tight, punchy, very uh, right. uh, nuanced bass. And it's not all about output. When people, I mean, ported certainly can be mm -hmm. all about output, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be. Right. So you can get a ported sub. We talked earlier about how the SVS subs come with port plugs. Exactly. There can be settings on the subwoofer for different things that will uh, EQ them to differently for music versus exactly. movies. So that's what I would recommend is a sub that has some settings, uh, mm -hmm. but in you know at its base level, a ported sub mm -hmm. uh, that you can then tune it to a little bit tighter sound. Exactly. And in the car, um, car subwoofers, when they're ported, each port will have what's called a tuning frequency. And it's at that frequency that it's basically performing at its absolute best. And anything below that, you start to get a little extra resonance. A lot of car amplifiers have what's called a subsonic filter. They start at 40 hertz, and you can filter out anything below that level. So if you know your box's uh, port tuning frequency, you can set the subsonic filter for that frequency, and it drops all that stuff out, and it really does tighten up the sound pretty yeah. nicely. Yeah. 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 Uh, Mr. Fox is back with another genre of music that uh, we probably hadn't considered when oh, yeah? we made our list, uh, but I'm digging it. Yeah. Uh, electro swing. Now, <laughs> before we hold up our signs, have you heard of any electro swing? I think I have. I, I have actually. Uh, so, um, I, I'm not going to be able to tell you the name, but there's there's one called it's called the Charleston Swing that you know is fairly well within the last 10, 15 years. I've got years. like a playlist on Spotify <laughs> that uh, was recommended to me by our friend uh, Eric, who has been on this show before. Yeah, excellent. Um, it's called a bar in Amsterdam. It's a podcast. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a playlist. And it is full of electro swing stuff. Okay. Uh, and it is a lot of fun music. So Cats and Jammer is one of the bands on that Beautiful. one. Beautiful. Diablo Swing Orchestra, <laughs> the Hillbilly Moon Explosion. Love it. Right? So mm -hmm. that's what I'm thinking of. I hope that's what you meant, Mr. Fox, by Electro <laughs> Swing. I'm, I'm listening to some songs in my head right now, and I'm yep. thinking of what sub I would want yep. sealed or ported. Right, you ready? Ready. Ready? Yep. Go. Do it. Ooh. Ah, hey. We disagree. Finally. I did get the sign correctly. I do mean to say sealed. Uh, and this so there's a lot of bass in this stuff. There is. But I absolutely wouldn't want it to be loose or boomy or at all uncontrolled. I want it to be like tight, hard-hitting. I want it to punch me in the chest. Um, but That's I want fair. it to do it accurately. So I think I want a sealed sub with a lot of power. Because they're not as efficient. Right, they're going to take more power more to get juice. that yep. kind of bass. Yep. But a good sealed sub with enough power so that it has plenty of output. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. And that is hard to argue against. I am just thinking of the electro side of things. You're right. It, it, this is music that has a lot of bass in it that is meant to be, it, it's meant to get you into the rhythm as much as it is into the melody. Um, so I'm thinking ported because I, I, I want that, that rhythm to hit me yeah. you know, throughout the entire song. So. And uh, I'm here to say that you're wrong and I'm right. <laughs> That's fair. So, and also you're right and I'm wrong. Exactly. So both of those are true. Uh, I'm Mr. a little Fox bit right. Says little Cat bit. Groove is a popular one. So that's another band that okay. falls into the electro swing uh, stuff. I will stuff. put that on Spotify on the way home after this is done. Uh, I see who's sitting over there, so I know who's behind this. But Sarah on Facebook said Steely Dan. Steely Dan. Well, that's a, that's an easy one. Yeah. 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 For sure. <laughs> I mean, Again, I, highly produced, and I don't mean that in a bad way engineered down to the nth degree you you want that recording to be in balance you want to hear it the way those guys intended it to be yeah heard. for sure no that yeah. is very music uh very purposefully recorded yeah uh, exactly. and it, you don't want anything uncontrolled in your system you want it to be as accurate as possible 100 percent agree dan on facebook porter sealed piano jazz with upright bass and jazz guitar Easy peasy, scoop of yeah. vanilla, scoop of chocolate. Yep. Yeah, yep. yeah, no. We need we need to hear those uh, yeah. fingers on the frets. I mean, we, we need do. to hear every single yep. subtlety of that bass guitar and I mean, of the jazz, uh, the upright bass. Yep. I mean, all of that. And, and I would argue a sealed sub with a lot of power behind it. Again, to get, again, not not only to get you know the the nuances of the bass, but to get you know just the full range. Just make sure it's coming through loud and clear because yep. it's just there's so much richness, richness and texture, and you want you you want it to have that dimensionality and that that texture. You want to be able to feel like you could reach out and touch it. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Oh, Mr. Boy. Fox is back. He says it's his last one. <laughs> Mr. Fox, last one from me. <laughs> Cooking bacon, ASMR. <laughs> uh, 
I don't even know how to begin with this one, so I'm going to say ported. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you want as much output as possible, yeah. right? I mean, you do. Uh, you're not. You're not. You're not looking for subtleties necessarily. You're no. looking for cr cracking and popping and snapping of you know, that grease. You want to. You want to feel like it's popping onto your face and burning you. You do, and in theory, you could put a freshly cooked piece of bacon in the port, and then the air would push the scent out towards you. So, there you go. I like it. Exactly. And I, and I keep bacon in the fridge just for that reason. <laughs> uh, Matt wants to know what about metal. This is a, ooh, this is a tricky one. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm doing it. Yep. I'm ooh. doing it. So yeah, disagreement again. Yeah. So I mean, <laughs> I, I want a ton of output. I, don't I want there yeah. Ever, I don't want there to ever be a chance that I don't have enough. I want to hear those double kicks. Uh, yeah, and I'm, that's true. You know, with metal, it's all about banging the head. It's not necessarily about pristine audio. It's about is it kicking me in the face or not? And right. I think Ported makes absolutely certain that's always going to happen. That's true. I mean, oh boy. I think I'm going sealed because I'm trying to, th I'm thinking about the iterations of metal that you could get into, mm. the, the subgenres. You, you've got the hair metal, you've got death metal, you've got black metal, you've got doom metal. Um, you know, are you listening to the, the, the droning doom stuff? Then yeah, I might go ported. Sure. Are you listening to more of the hair metal kind of stuff? I might go sealed where, again, I'm getting that, that, that tightness and, and, and balance. I, You've kind of convinced me that I might be a little bit wrong, but I might be a little bit right, too. Cool. <laughs> I, uh, we agree on that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Chelsea says, uh, and this one actually was on our list. Uh, okay. Our producer, Anna, came up with it. It was the first thing on our list. I'm glad Chelsea asked it so we didn't have to. Uh, what about podcasts? Podcasts. I'm going sealed. I am, too. Yeah. The, my reasoning is that, especially thinking about Male voices on the lower end of the uh, of, of the spectrum. Um, if you have a ported sub, if you have a lot of extra resonance, it tends to start to get a little bit muddled when it's all just conversation. Yep. Um, so yeah, when you hear somebody, you want to hear everything they say clearly enunciated, and so you don't want to have the extra resonance that the port's going to provide to. Uh, uh, to what, muddle things I listen up. to a lot of podcasts, uh, and mm -hmm. I have a sub. It's not exactly sealed or ported. It's a it's a sub. It's a it's a 10 inch sub with a passive radiator. So okay. technically yeah, you right. can't call it sealed or ported. Yes, exactly. Kind of. Um, but uh, it's more more like a ported than right. a sealed it's because there's a ton yeah. of output. Right. Sure. Uh, and it's not the most accurate output, yep. right? But it's mm -hmm. it's a very well-rounded sub. I, I listen to a lot of different stuff. But there's times when I listen to mm -hmm. podcasts uh, like 20,000 Hertz or Reply All. Sure. Uh, there's a disc golf podcast I listen of to on the regular. They're always putting cool intro music in. It's different every time. Sometimes I'm like, whoa, hold on. I just have too much bass for a podcast right now. Right, exactly. Uh, and if it were a more controlled, more accurate sub, it might not, might not feel that way. Right. Uh, another, another thought of this, sorry to stop. No, no. I listen to Howard Stern a lot as well. Okay. And his voice, uh, he uses yeah. a ton of compression on his microphone, and he does this on purpose so he doesn't feel like a, you know how my voice sounds right now? Mm. I don't use a ton of compression, and I sang my voice out at the show this weekend. <laughs> We're lucky it's back today. Yeah, exactly. But he doesn't want to do that because he's talking for five hours a day. Mm. So he uses compression. As a result, his voice is super boomy in your face, bringing out a lot of low end. Sure. And, uh, you know, because he used to have a really nasal voice today, it's a lot deeper <laughs> right. as he's gotten older and he's used more compression. And right. I've had to turn my sub down because it was too much just yep. with his voice in my car. Yep. I believe so. it. And you notice it in uh, home theater systems too, sometimes if you have, uh, especially like smaller ported subs in, in, say, boxed systems that you can't adjust very much. If, they, if they've got the port, you'll hear some of the dialogue sometimes um, get muddled and because you're getting that extra resonance out of the port. Yeah, there you go. Uh, it looks like we've slowed down. There's no more requests unless I've missed something. Uh, there are some questions, though. Jeff asks, is direction a big issue in a car or SUV? Like the direction, I guess, which direction you're pointing the subwoofer at? Hmm. Direction always affects it. What, what's the right direction? Obviously depends on the specific sub in the sure. specific car. You want to and elaborate? Yeah. So, I mean, as we'll always say, it, it comes down to what sounds best for you. Um, we actually did an experiment a few years ago in, in my car, which was a, a Taurus at the time, so larger sedan, where um, I put an SPL meter on the dash and I aimed the sub in different directions just to see what was getting, you know, where I was getting the most sound pressure level from. Counterintuitively enough, it was back up against the back seats and facing towards the back of the vehicle. 
Yep. Um, it was using the rest of the trunk as a chamber to amplify the, the, the sound of the bass. Um, so in a sedan, I, I will always recommend that you, <laughs> you put it back against the back seats and aim it towards the back of the vehicle. Um, in an SUV, though, you've got a lot more space to work with. Basically, the entire vehicle serves as, as the, uh, the chamber um, for the base. So this is why you'll see it often on, on the side of the cargo area in an mm -hmm. SUV. Um, so in that case, facing it towards the back of the vehicle in an SUV probably would be fine, but you can experiment with it on the side or the back just, just, just to hear what is going to sound best to you. Because that's, that's the bottom line. You want to make sure that this sounds great and that you're enjoying it and that it sounds the way you want it to sound. Yeah, uh, and if you're going with a, you know, just a sort of a, a regular old, just a box with a speaker in it, mm -hmm. and you have the ability to move it around, exactly. uh, try doing that. See yeah. what happens. Yeah, exactly. Flip it around, face sure. it forward, flip it around, face it backwards, and mm -hmm. play the same song. Drive around, listen to it from the driver's seat, listen to it from the back seat. You're mm -hmm. going to hear different amounts of bass uh, when you move that thing around, and that's just because of how those bass frequencies bounce around your car. That's exactly correct. Uh, we've got a couple more coming in. All right, good. Uh, let's see. Tom says... Uh, wait, joke of the day. Oh, no, I haven't read it yet. Should I keep reading? Let me read it before I Go read ahead. it out loud. <laughs> yeah, right. Joke of the day. If you have crutch in the field, you'll have a leg up. Uh, the oh, puns. Uh, nice. Well, well played, <laughs> Tony. Uh, and he also loves Howard Stern. Excellent. Uh, Jeff says, bass. George Michael with Queen and Lisa Stanchfield. Boom, boom, boom. Wow. And asks about dual subs. And asks about dual subs. Yeah, okay. so first off, let's answer his first question. George Michael with right. Queen and Lisa Stanchfield, sealed or ported? Well, I mean, he said boom, boom, boom. Well, all right, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and he also asked about dual subs. I mean, I think if you're going with dual subs, you're probably in the ported uh, you know, side of things anyway. Most, you're looking for a ton of bass. Yeah, most likely. I actually... Back in the day, um, about few, uh, 10 years ago-ish, I had a dual 10-inch sub, uh, or a, a dual 10-inch sub box with Boston Acoustic subs back nice. when they were an aftermarket mm -hmm. uh, car audio thing. Um, and it was a sealed box, and I loved it. I mean, I had a huge amp running it. I had to run one out gauge to the, uh, to the battery to make it all work. Um, but I loved it, but it did require a lot of power. So yeah, with, with the dual sub thing, you probably are looking for volume. So yeah, ported does seem to... Like it would make the most sense. Oh, uh, okay. Couple. There, we're just going to keep interacting with people. Fair enough. Uh, and uh, I hope we we still have time to get to our the rest of our segments. We all good. We're running okay. Got it. All right. All right. We, we, we'll do four, a few more fashions. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so first uh, from DJ Ocelate One. I hope I got what you're putting down there, DJ. <laughs> What about a Swiss Army knife? Everything between classical to electro, uh, which this wow, might fit into the yeah. uh, similar to what you put in your car. So yeah, so I would I, I I would say ported, but pay attention to the amp that you're getting. Make sure it has a subsonic filter, so you can dial it in and get it a little bit tighter, but still get that big resonant you know loud boom when you're playing the EDM kind of tracks, and still get that nice balanced detail out of say classical or jazz. Yeah. Uh, I would agree. Ported gives you the output you want when you have to have it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. it might not be as accurate as a sealed box could be, but if yes, you're looking for true. a Swiss Army knife, I mean, a Swiss Army knife isn't the best knife for everything that you need a exactly. knife for, right? But it does, it's always with you. Mm -hmm. It's always It's always sharp. It's always a knife. So yep. uh, yep. I think ported is going to be your probably the way to go. Uh, potato. Is that a thing? Is that a type of music? When you're listening to a potato, uh, it could. Uh, I like my potatoes yeah, sealed. Yeah, so we can we can uh, we can mash it with the sealed box. There you go. That's good. Uh, Matthew Bailarjon, I don't know if I said that right. I apologize if I didn't. You guys have helped out with lots, so just wanted to thank you guys at Crutchfield. Right on. Our pleasure. Uh, DJ, oh, he told me it's pronounced oscillate or oscillate. Okay. I'm still not sure with what he's typed <laughs> here. Well, you're the English nerd. Yeah, exactly. what, how would you say? I would say os. Oscillate. Oscillate. Yeah. Oscillate. Yeah, it makes sense. Fair enough. I was going with like, a, I thought it had a sort of a spanish -y thing happening <laughs> there, might, right? Oscillate? <laughs> uh, that makes a lot more sense yeah, than what exactly. I came up with. Oh, do we have a vehicle question there? Uh, On the right hand we, side? Uh, yeah. Yes, we do. Tom says, I have a vintage Buick GS convertible. 
I would love to update the sound system and would love to get some quality bass, yeah. but don't necessarily want the world to hear it. Need some help. Uh, so it's a convertible. It is a convertible. So most likely the sub goes... Uh, I, don't, I, I have to Google it. What does a Buick GS convertible look like? Well, if it's vintage, what I'm hoping is that it's got some space under a seat, and this could be a great situation for one of the powered subs that we were talking, or that JR was talking about earlier. Something smaller, a little bit more compact, that you can fit under the seat, so it's, you know, firing up in your direction. It's near you. You can hear oh. it. You can feel it. But it's not blasting out of the uh, blasting out at the world. So that would be one of the first things I would consider. So I just Googled it. We got the images up. Oh, is, yeah. this, is this the car we're talking about? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I want one. Yeah, no I kidding. want it right now. <laughs> I want to go cruising in this car. Uh, and I would also want bass in it. Uh, but yeah, you're not necessarily trying to attract attention with that, right? You just want uh, you just want your music to sound good. So uh, what did you say? What did you say while I was re uh, Googling uh, this car? Uh, I was saying that this could be a good chance to have a, a compact powered sub under one of the seats. Yeah, yeah. So I it's think firing that's the way near you. You can feel it. You can hear it. But you're not blasting it out at the world. Because right, if you put too small of a sub in that big trunk, uh, yeah, you're, gonna, you're not going to hear it. Right. Uh, and your trunk's going to vibrate. You need a lot of Dynamax <laughs> exactly. to fix that. Uh, and if you put a big sub in the trunk, everybody will hear it. <laughs> if you just put something under your seat, uh, you will feel it. You will hear it. Your music exactly. will sound better. I think that's the way to go. Great. Uh, very cool. This has been a ton of fun, man. This Thank has been you for fun. joining me on this. Hey, uh, anytime. We, we've got another guest who's just sitting there very impatiently, looking very angry that we're not talking uh, to him on the camera I yet. No. I hope he's. Uh, I hope he comes in with a good attitude. Uh, I do too. He also he knows where I work, so I'll be, exactly. uh, I gotta be careful do, here. Do you edit his stuff? I don't. Luckily. Okay. Good. So, so yeah, we're, we're good on that front. <laughs> uh, we're joking, of course. Jeff Miller's coming in soon. Uh, he's, uh, he's a he's a he's a he's a he's a gem. So we're going to talk about Axpona. Thanks again, Matt. Really hey, appreciate it. Thanks my to pleasure. everybody that uh, sent us in requests. Uh, that went uh, probably better than we ever could have hoped it yeah. would go. Uh, so we're going to keep these signs around. We'll probably play this game again someday because uh, that was a ton of fun. Jeff Miller, how you doing, my friend? Good. I was. Just in Intimidated to be here in the garage. I haven't been down here before. Yeah, we got a comment. People love our video set. <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean, it's, these are real tools. We could really do some work in here. I know. Am I tough enough to be down here? We could, we could build boxes. We could modify stuff. The only thing we can't do is get a car in here. Oh, yeah. It's inside. It's in a basement. <laughs> so we could figure that so, out. Uh, so you are here. Did, did you, were you on the last show? Did you come on and talk yeah. about Expo, Expona? I was actually live on location in Expona. You in were Chicago. live in. I, that's, see, I missed stuff. I missed that, man. How, <laughs> how cool awesome. was that? Yeah. First off, uh, for me and for anybody that wasn't yeah. watching last show, what is Expona? So it's called the uh, so it's called Expona Audio Expo North America. It's the largest audio focus show in North America. Um, it's at it's at it's just outside of Chicago in Schaumburg, a, a suburb of Chicago. The uh, Renaissance Convention Center, which is this huge sprawling convention center. Um, but it takes over that with like it's five or six massive ballrooms and smaller ballrooms and mid-sized ballrooms. Mm -hmm. So it takes over that building and the connected 16 floor hotels and just filled with audio gear. Wow. Anything you can think about with audio, um, an expo where you got like vinyl and record, uh, like a record shop basically, like, you know, tons of record vendors, you're digging through the crates, reel to reel tapes, um, every vintage audio, I mean, Every audio company we, not every audio company we sell, but mo a lot of the audio companies we sell and yeah. then, um, beyond, in the world beyond the, uh, and, and the super high end type so of stuff. It so. sounds like CES, but with a much more narrow focus yeah. on just audio. Right, exactly. And not car stereo, right? It's not no. a car stereo thing at all. This is all home, like hi fi. Yeah, they did have one uh, vehicle in there and they were doing some kind of demos in there, but yeah, this is basically focus. So I hope that's okay with the. Now we're, we're well, in, not, nothing we can do about it now. Uh, we're in the car set, uh, yeah. but we don't have to talk about cars. Uh, we're just talking about Expona, which so yeah. um, you came back with some highlights, some of your favorite things that you saw. At I Expona. did, and actually, like as we were um, starting the show here, uh, we published my recap of the of the show. We had so many. I took like over a thousand pictures. I wrote three thousand words. My editor was going through it and got it got it fine tuned right to the moment the show went up. So I think Alexis is going to share the... Um, yeah, we've got pictures of you there oh, yeah, 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 at Expona <laughs> right now. So yes, they, oh, that's the other thing. They had uh, uh, ear gear, headphone section. One of the ballrooms was just nothing but 
um, uh, basically like its own headphone show. Um, so that was cool. That makes I, sense to do that in the ballrooms because everybody yeah. can be in one room listening to that and they not disturbing each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, um, I, I told in the last show, I, I, we had the event director Liz Smith on and I, um, when I sp spoke to her before the show, I was like, Hey, uh, tell me how to get through this. What's the, you know, I'm thinking about it almost like a movie where it's like the final scene is going to be this climactic thing. And she's like, no, nah. Um, it's more, and described it more as like an open world video game where you're kind of moving around and, and, and everywhere you turn a corner, boom, there's an audio legend, mm -hmm. a guy who's designed, named the speaker, boom, there's like this um, state of the art streamer that's integrated amp with like, you know, the 4K screen. Is that the Hi Fi Rose? Yeah, like you're the Hi Fi about? Rose. Um, uh, I can't remember. Hey, the name, real, I'm going to stop you for a second. But yeah. There's still people asking about subwoofers, and I, I want you to know that if you stick with us, I'm going to rapid fire answer those questions at the end of the show. As okay. soon as we're done with Jeff, yeah. I'll hit on those. So please yeah. stick with us uh, and uh, and know that we, I will answer all those questions. Yeah, and I'm going to hold you to. I want to hear part B of Anthony's interview. That was, uh, we're going to we're going to have him back for <laughs> that was sure. Awesome. Uh, he's, he lived in Florida. He put subs on boats oh, a yeah. lot. Uh, <laughs> that's definitely a thing. Um, Cool. So uh, you you sent a whole bunch of stuff that you sent in as highlights, yeah. and I'm particularly interested in several of them. Um, ooh, what what we got in this picture here? What so are you? So this is the here? Meze Elite. So anytime yeah. I get a chance to try those out, I'll, um, I I, I want to try. I actually got to speak to uh, Antonio Meze, who uh, is the lead designer and founder of the company, and everything they do is like is super boutique. Like try to make it make it an event every time you put put on the headphones and. Once again, it was an event <laughs> to get yeah. to try them, even though I'm very familiar with those headphones. Um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to tell you when we go when you go to the hotel section, they uh, it's 16 floors. You go, we actually we worked we went to the top, worked our way down. Every room is like, you know, they throw out the bed and everything. Uh, they put those all in one room. <laughs> right. uh, they they have a deal with the hotel, um, and they fill it with audio gear. And each room has its own like sort of theme or character charm you know there's like intimate settings this is uh hi-fi uh, this is the hi-fi rose mofi team setting up their their room they tried to make these like real interesting lighting and plants and everything um focal went the other direction they just like tried to um they had a huge ballroom so they um went with almost what looked like a concert set up with uh with uh you know um like a big stage apparatus looking thing um, project was there tons of turntables i and i'm just now i'm just like naming things over and over again <laughs> you're rattling off the yeah. list uh we actually got to see some of the stuff uh for our sales advisors got to see the mofi and the hi-fi rose stuff which is pretty cool they yeah. were they sent us a video they filmed partly the, there yeah. and partly mm -hmm. at their home uh but that was really cool to see some stuff so our sales advisors all got to experience a little bit of expona yeah. through mofi you're seeing the, yeah. one of the mofi and who, guys there who this is right here this was kind of breaking news you know andrew jones from elac i was going to ask you about yeah. it you got to see andrew jones <laughs> yeah so at, at the show um tommy our buyer he he, uh, he gets uh, he's very connected he gets a breaking news on his phone Andrew Jones, you know, fresh press release. Andrew Jones has has joined MoFi, um, has left Eli, and so we leave, and we're like, we should go over to the MoFi guys and just say, hey, um, and they happen to be next. To, there's Tommy, met up right with. <laughs> um, we happen to catch him in the hall, like literally walking from the Elac room to the MoFi room, which was like right across the hall. What? And there's like, and we're like, what is going on? Like, like my, like we were joking <laughs> about it, and. Um, and so then I talked to him, and uh, the next day after the celebrating and everything had calmed down, um, I noticed the ELAC guys, it wasn't as if they were at odds or anything. They were, um, you know, very cordial with each other still. And he said he's going to miss his friends, but he feels like they're in very good hands. I think the formal lead designer at Paradigm is now at ELAC, so they're in good hands, and ELAC will still be making great stuff. But um, he, they've sort of given him almost carte blanche. Um, obviously, they have their idea of what they want to do with uh, with speakers, and they didn't tell me what they that didn't, was. They didn't reveal all their secrets to <laughs> nah, you? But I uh, asked him, I was like, you know, did you uh, did you just show up day one with like a blank Word doc? And you know, or and he's like, oh, no, 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 I've got ideas sort of percolating. He's like a, um, he's like a songwriter, except right. his songs are building the speakers, right? Yeah, he's yeah. probably already envisioning, he probably dreams these things, and yep. he wakes up and he jots mm -hmm. a sketch down on how he wants to build a port or a box or an enclosure yeah. or something like that. Yep. 
he's a is a creative genius and he also knows the technical side of yeah. the speakers that's why he's in such high demand that's why everybody's been like where's andrew jones who's he right. what's he doing <laughs> and uh, what and uh what he can what i can say what he did say is that he he feels um not that i mean elac had a very specific plan but with mofi he feels like he's got um you know the freedom he's looking for and also some time to develop his ideas so mm -hmm. it might be a little more out there than what um we uh the stuff always looks it? pretty cool. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's great. Uh, I, you did you get to see on a completely different yeah. thing? Uh, I want to know about this guy right here. Okay. Did you get to see the clips? The clips Jubilee. Jubilee. Yeah, they, I think we have a picture of that, Landon. If you can find it, that's the speaker that's taller than Jeff. Yeah, it's a. Uh, um, it's yeah, no problem. It, He's got to find it. Talk to it's us an, about oh, the well, clips. You, Jubilee. you are familiar. You are as a huge clips fan. Are yes. very familiar with the clips horn speaker. Yes, Ball, I am. Clips is um, you know. Design like the the what Clips was known for for has been known for for seventy five years. And the Clipshorn is a large speaker. It's yeah. designed to fit into a corner of your room. You right. get one on the left, one on the right, in the perfectly sized room. And I mean, one of the best sounding sets of speakers I've ever listened to. I didn't only get to listen to it for a couple songs. Yeah. And it just it was an emotionally moving experience at just how good it was. Yep. Uh, but the uh, and this speaker you're seeing on the screen now is bigger than the ones I got to see, which exactly. were the Klipsch horns, the original, the OG Klipsch speaker. Yeah. This uh, was this is this based on a Paul W. Klipsch design? It is. Well, it, and and it's um, sort of so that 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 uh, you see the the horn at the top for the highs. I think there's uh, there's horns dedicated to like all the frequencies. Um, the guy I'm standing next to is Roy Delgado. Who is an audio legend himself, you know, along with Andrew Jones, he uh, worked directly with Paul Klipsch and has led he, since, um, you know, since he he's been in the in the company since 1986, but in the last like decade or so, he has led the heritage line, the you know, that still makes the Klipsch horn, still makes all those things by hand in Hope, Arkansas, um, and he. Uh, he took this. This was an original Paul Klipsch design, but you know he's used all the new. Um, I'm gonna like I, I they don't, they, <laughs> start, they tried to build them a while back, yeah, right? but yeah. it, it didn't actually come to fruition to be a consumer product. Yes, yeah, and not, they got used as as movie theater speakers, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yep. right? and it wasn't. Um, yeah, it just wasn't feasible with the, with the technology of the day and all that kind of stuff. Um, but he wasn't gonna let that idea die. <laughs> and uh, he, had, he, he laughed. He said, you know, he told his bosses at, at Klipsch and up in Indian, Indianapolis, um, I, you know, I know what Paul, Klip, what Paul wanted to build, and he's not here to tell you, so you just have to take my word for it. <laughs> <laughs> and thank goodness they did, because when you're in the room, as huge as those speakers are, it does give you that, like, where the speakers melt away, and you're just kind of, you know. Overwhelmed with, with the, the music. sound. Yeah. Like, it's just... All in, encompassing. It's yeah. just, uh, it, yeah. That sounds ridiculous for people who are watching that haven't heard him to say, how could the speaker you not see this? Of course you see it, but it's like, it's not as if it's like coming at you. It's just like, you know, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're, you're part of the sound. Did, did you get to hear this speaker? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah and it engulfed it. I mean, this was in one of the larger rooms and it just swallowed it up. And it feels like effortless. I mean, I, you know, the, the those horns are so efficient. They yeah. just, um, don't take a ton to drive them either. Um, if there's anything that you want to make sure we don't forget, don't let me skip by it. But there's one more thing on your list that I yeah. definitely want to see. And I know we have a picture of it. Oh, uh, it's the Wharfdale <laughs> Lintons where they're stacked on top of oh, yeah. each other. Uh, it was when one of Jeff's emails to us. Uh, if you can find the picture of that. Uh, and uh, just keeping with the... Uh, I should say about the Focal room. They, yeah, those while are those, we're pulling that up, what's going those on? Those are those Maestro. The, the, they had like a ton of different setups. This is their main two-channel setup. Um, their Maestro Utopia, so the beryllium-driven um, floor-standing speakers there, and they uh, played this. They played a bunch of like your know, traditional audio file, traditional rock track. Then they played this EDM thing, and those. <laughs> ballroom lights that that big uh the chandelier the up chandelier, there okay the, the lights started flickering the, the everything things were 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 were, bump, were thumping so much it was it was it was something everybody you know you kind of look to each other and go whoa that was crazy <laughs> nice um, and they had a full atmos setup in there too with the core 826d's that we sell the toppers you know, yeah yeah with yeah. the up firing speakers and mm -hmm. that's in the, that's on the other side so they had to stop that demo you go around to the other side 
they've got a full living room home theater set up on the other side. So they, they did it big. Is there and anything Focal can't do? No. Nah, <laughs> uh, a couple things. Uh, looks like the link to the article yeah. that you wrote, uh, your uh, Expona wrap-up article, that's live. We've got a link to that in the comments here. Yep. Uh, Chris says he was there. Oh, uh, nice. I assume he's talking about Expona with Nerdvana. Oh, sweet. Are you familiar with Nerdvana? Um, I, I'm not. Yeah, I don't I, know what that I, is. I, the, the name, it sounds familiar, but I can't like think of exactly what. Somebody Google it and tell yeah. me what Nerdvana <laughs> is. And then I'm going to be like, oh, of course Nerdvana. Um, not Nirvana. Yeah, no. I'm familiar with Nerdvana, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but not Nerdvana. Uh, so, uh, cool. What, uh, I should say about the, the article, we, since we were doing it like right up to the minute, the lead image is still, <laughs> it, 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 we're still working on getting it uploaded, but everything else is there. So you, you, you'll, you'll just notice that the lead image is, uh, but all, all the other images are there that, um, and, and my so description still and everything. Putting the finishing touches on yeah. the article. <laughs> nice. Uh, so I think they're still looking for the picture of those wharf tails. Uh, but what else? It's uh, in that article, but it, uh, it's, yeah, in, it's in, oh. Uh, if you pull up that article, it's it's kind of near the end of it. Um, but what they did was they took. So if you have a pair of Lintons and you want to, um, hey, Alexis, if you could send me the link to that article in our in our chat, uh, I think I can get that on this computer here as well. Um, but yeah, they they stacked uh, a pair of Lintons on top of another pair. So I mean that's a pretty old school thing that you've probably seen before. Um, speakers stacked on top of speakers. But this was like near the end of the. Yeah, but I just thought that's something people did. Because, dude, wouldn't it be cool to stack two yeah. speakers? Well, uh, it kind of was. I mean, we were, <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, they they put they played Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I mean, it it you know it did sound um, sound very good, and of course spilled right through, right out into the hallway. Um, they had a good neighbor policy where you they you know because you're next to uh, other speakers and people, some speakers companies want to play it soft, some some audio companies want to play things um, loud. They uh, they, they, they want you to play at kind of reasonable levels, but at the end of the night, they, you know, everybody kind of ha has an unwritten agreement. They're just like, all right, let's play around a little bit. Um, speaking of, SBS, you know, you guys are giving out the... Yeah, were they, were they at Expona? They, they were Expona. Were they nice to their neighbors? They were nice, and uh, but but because they uh, they said, you know, they, they put set certain times of when they were going to uh, <laughs> really let loose, and their neighbors were nice, too. They were like the cool neighbors, like, oh, yeah, of course, you're having people over. Go you're ahead. SVS. Yeah. Play your subs. <laughs> yeah, you know, um, so... <laughs> Uh, you're, we were on uh, that floor, and I couldn't get into the room, and I talked to um, our representative there, who, we, who, and I was like, I'm sorry I missed our meeting, but uh, we'll come back later. I walked down the hall, and I was like, and I, like the, the, the floor <laughs> was shaking. It was like, oh, this is great. So, um, but, yeah, they had a packed room of people um, wanting to hear their, hear their stuff. Um, yeah, the live Q&A with, with Audio Legends. It, it, Read the uh, <laughs> the article because I'm gonna forget somebody or forget oh, yeah. something. We, we can't read every word yeah. <laughs> here. There's a ton of stuff. We're not gonna. No way we can get to all of it. Jeff is uh, taking a lot of. Oh, look at the Mac and stack. Yeah, I love it. Anytime. Beautiful. Yeah, it, it, we were like uh, moths, you know, coming to the blue meters. Um, <laughs> That's it, it what they do. Drew us through, through the through the ground. They had oh. a heart player. She was she was really good. Oh. Um, kind of gave you could get you could put a pep in your step as you're walking through the lobby. Oh, this real to real new technology. This real to real yeah. coming out. Huh? <laughs> that's uh, that's a company. It's actually in Fredericksburg, um, so right up the road from us. UHA, um, he hand or they hand build um, these real to reels, and they cost like almost ninety thousand dollars. But um, you know, they played that warm blanket take five that we've heard a million times. Uh, audio. Tommy called it the warm blanket track, mm. and <laughs> um, D D DVLA was there. Yeah, soundbar. Uh, it was funny that tiny soundbar got just as much wow wows as uh, some of the uh, larger rooms with like the big giant speakers. Um, but yeah, there was the Wharfdales. That was when they stacked them up, played some Stevie Ray Vaughan, and um, you know, that's another thing that kind of attracted all of us. We all came in there and like, we got to hear what's going on in here. <laughs> so this, uh, you mentioned earlier, stacking two speakers. That's all these guys did, right? It's like they were hanging out one night and they're like, hey, what if we took the Wharfdale Linton and we yeah. put another one on top of it? Right. And we hooked it all up, so you got two lefts and two rights stacked. And uh, apparently, that sounds really good when you yeah. do that. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so you got to hear those. Did those uh, impress? Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, but yeah, I, just, I mean, the main takeaway I would just say, if you're, if next year, if they do this. Um, first of all, I think the video team, we should try to get you guys out here somehow. I'm with you on that, my friend. <laughs> but, I think, um, uh, <laughs> 
But uh, for sure, if you're like in the air, if you can get there, if you're watching this, if you've made it this far through me talking, then you definitely want to want to be there. It was. Um, I don't think it was just because I haven't left the house in two weeks or two <laughs> years, and uh, but it, it was just a really nice feeling. Not any of the pretentiousness that you might expect from super audio files, you know, buttoned up type of people. Yeah, everybody was cool, accessible, just happy to see each other, wanting to have fun. And I got to go to Wrigley Field. That was you that was see a, a Cubs game? Yeah, that was the first time I've ever been to Wrigley. Um, right after we did Crutchfield Live, hopped in an Uber. They take me. They take you downtown Wrigleyville, and it's like restaurants and everything. Yeah. And I just, um, you know, I've seen that outside Wrigley Field mm -hmm. a, a million times in my life on TV. It's better in my brain. I step out of the car, look over at the restaurant, look, look up, like, oh, there's. Wait, what? That's Wrigley Field right there. What's going on there? <coughs> I've, um, it's just I, right in the middle of this. <laughs> I've, I've been to Wrigley Field once, didn't yeah. see a game. I was there to see Billy Joel. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was an amazing I experience. Yeah. Billy Joel live at Wrigley Field. Hey, uh, quick callback, Nerdvana. Yeah. Nerdvana is your one-stop geek shop in Jackson, Tennessee. We oh, deal in video games, trading card games, board games, and electronics. Uh, so Chris says Nirvana was a play on words. All of us audio nerds in one place. Sweet. So cool. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I'm sorry I hadn't heard of you before. Uh, and uh, no disrespect meant. So uh, thank you for the shout out. Appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Um, we're almost done here. You want to hang out while I answer some of these questions? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, very cool. Let's see what else we've got here. Uh, we just did the Buick GS convertible earlier. Christopher says, I feel like sealed box provides a tight bass, such as a live jazz track or live instrumentation. I think I would agree with you there. Matt, would you agree as well? Seal, sealed box for jazz, yeah. especially live jazz, tight bass being the key. Would you agree? Sure, yeah. Yeah? There you go. Yeah. Uh, what else we got here? Tom from earlier said his uh, Buick GS was a 1971 red with a white top. I'll bet it looks great. Uh, Chris says he was there with Nirvana. Got that. Over here, I should have thought of Potato. That was my favorite genre. So I uh, had someone explaining Potato. I missed that. Um, cool. I, oh, here we go. Can I put underseat subwoofers in my trunk? Can you, can you guys bring me back one of those underseat subs we had over here earlier? Uh, can I put an underseat subwoofer in my trunk? I have two underseat subs and they don't fit in my new car. I took them out of my oh, old yeah. car. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, Matt is garage. back, everybody. Uh, this is Once an under again. this is an underseat sub. We had two out earlier: the Kicker and this Infinity Bass Link. These are designed to sit flat, small mm. enough to fit under the seat of a lot of cars, mm. but maybe not every car's seats. That's correct. Uh, and this person is saying they have two underseat subs. They don't fit in my new car. Uh, he had them oh. in his old car. So this is uh, Matthew. So uh, can you put? subs like this in a trunk and obviously you can but are they going to sound good that's um, the real question here right it depends on the size of the trunk um your average sedan size trunk i wouldn't do it um it's the output unfortunately is probably going to get lost these really are designed for what i would call sort of proximal listening you, you want them in the cabin with you yeah, as close to you as they possibly can um because they're not designed to put out a ton of power not designed to project a lot of stuff but they do a great job of, of just filling in what's missing and, and just giving it a little, your music a little extra depth, depth and dimension. But yeah, as soon as you start getting them away from from the, the passenger cabin, you're gonna you're gonna lose. Um, you're just not gonna notice it quite as much. Yeah, no, you want if them it's a small car, teeny tiny car, sure. In the hatchback um, area of a small yeah, exactly, car, exactly. a small pickup truck with a crew cab on it might do okay. If right. it's in the back part of the truck, right. But yeah, right. if it's if it's sealed off and in the trunk, uh, it's gonna be hard for it to really give you the base you were hoping you to get out That's of it. Right. If you have two of them, you, you're closer. You're yeah, moving sure. some you're gonna more, get more air. volume at least. Yeah, sure. Um, it's unfortunate they won't fit under your seats, man. That's a bummer. <laughs> uh, you know, if you're. Uh, if you're looking for different subs for this car, since you might not have the best solution, uh, let our advisors help you. Call them live. Uh, we're about to end this show, so we can't probably help you anymore. But our advisors are here on the phones, chatting online seven days a week. Uh, and so give them a call. 
check them out, tell them what you've got, what you want, and uh, they can certainly give you some advice on what types of subs to go with. Uh, We're going to wrap this up. Uh, I think we've run pretty long. We're not going to have time today to get to hashtag Crutchfield, but we absolutely want to keep doing that, and uh, we want to see your pictures of the stuff you've bought and installed and how much you love it. So please keep tagging Crutchfield in your Instagrams and all that stuff. We'd love to see what you've done, and we'd uh, we'd love to feature you on the show. The next show is May 19th. That's two weeks from today. Uh, You should definitely listen to that show and uh, watch that show so that you can get the code word to the SVS sweepstakes. Get 25 extra entries uh, so you get a better your chances of winning two free, uh, two uh, SVS Micro 3000 subs. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell your friends about it as well. Get them involved. Uh, subscribe, like uh, the, the channel, turn notifications on, all the YouTube stuff. Uh, and uh, I think that's it, Matt. Any closing Good words? Enough. There you go. <laughs> For, uh, on behalf of everybody here behind the scenes, uh, making this work, feeding me comments, uh, the camera guys, all this stuff, thank you to the video team for making this possible. For Matt, for Jeff, for Anthony, uh, and for Zach B, who was here earlier talking about the SBS sweepstakes, everybody that joined us on, uh, on camera today. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm JR. I'll be back in two weeks uh, with the code word for the SBS sweepstakes. We're out. Head on back to reality. Yes, it's time.